In today's class, I'm going to share with you a couple of Sufi stories. So grab your props and come join me on the mat. Welcome to Gentle Restorative. My name is Sandra. We're gonna actually start laying down. So grab your bolster or a pillow or your blanket, whatever you want to be a pillow. And let's go ahead and lay back. When you get there, big sigh and close your eyes. And I'd like for us to do a body scan to start with. So taking your focus to the crown of the head and I'll guide you slowly coming down into the forehead, the eyes. We're looking for tension. We're looking for areas of the body that have something to say. Bring your focus down into the temples, cheeks, into the jaw, into the back of the neck and the throat, so both sides. Pausing at the shoulders. Take a deep breath in from the shoulders. Let go of their tension with your exhale. Let's take our focus down into the right arm, all the way down into the hand. Notice what's going on, any issues, with the elbow, wrist, fingers. Same thing with the left arm. Finding an evenly paced breath. Then let's go back to the shoulders. Inhale from there and exhale. Bringing your focus down into the chest. And on the reverse side of the chest. So the shoulder blades, the space between the shoulder blades. Down through the ribs, stomach, hips. Let's pause to check out the low back. Inhale from the low back and exhale there. Taking the focus down through the right leg. Stop to check out the knee, the ankle, the foot. And then take your focus down into the left leg. Same thing. And then acknowledging the entire body all at once. Finding the breath. Breathing in. Breathing out. When you're ready, bringing the hands to the heart, Nanjali Mudra, prayer pose. To pause here and set your intention for your practice.
when you're ready, release the hands. Slow, deep inhale through the nose, hold the breath, and let it go. So I'm curious, when you hold the breath, where are you feeling it? Slow, deep inhale, hold the breath. Keep holding. As this becomes kind of a struggle, where are you feeling it? And then go ahead and exhale when you need to. So from here, let's draw that right knee in. Each inhale, let that knee push into the hands to straighten out the arms. Exhale, pull the thigh toward the ribs. Keep that left foot flexed. Back of the left thigh pushing down towards the earth without locking the knee. Keep going with that vinyasa you've created with the right leg. Inhale. Knee moves away from you. Exhale, you draw it back in. Next time you have exhaled and you've pulled that leg in, hold it there, but continue to breathe. And then the left hand is gonna to come to rest on your left hip. That right hand is gonna stay on top of the right knee and it's gonna help open out the right hip. So start drawing the right knee down towards the ground and then use the hand to help bring that leg back up. So inhale. Open the knee out to the side. Exhale, bring the knee back up. Why do we have the left hand on the left hip? It's to remind the left hip that when you open out the right knee, not to go with it. So we're, we're weighting that hip down. And you're practicing ahimsa, so you're only opening that right hip as much as safe as is safe for you. Skipped a word there. One more. And this time when you exhale, as that knee comes back to center, take it all the way across into your supine twist. Keep that right shoulder down. If you need a block underneath that right knee, go ahead and Put it there. So just focusing on settling into your space, finding your calm, your peace, and then we're working our way towards the theme. So don't think I've forgotten. Just trying to help you settle in. When you're ready, return to your back. We still have that right knee bent. And now we're gonna stretch that right leg up towards the ceiling using either your hands or your strap. Option A, stay right here. Leg stays where it is. You're focusing on the breath. Option B, add a vinyasa. 
drawing the leg in with the inhale and then letting it back off with the exhale. So one thing I want you to notice, if you've chosen the vinyasa and perhaps the movement of the leg coming in is very small, I want the breath to match that movement, which means that inhale is going to be super slow as is the movement of that leg. Same with the exhale. So I should be at the top of my breath when my leg stops moving. Couple more times, and I've switched to Ujjayi breath here, and you're welcome to do that if that is in your yoga toolbox. All right, the next time that leg is straight up and down, let go with the hands or let go of the strap if you're hanging on to it. Lengthen through both legs, inhale, and then slowly exhale that right leg all the way down to the mat. So I should be at the end of that exhale when my leg touches down. and then relax. Does the right leg feel any different from the left, vice versa? All right, go ahead and draw that left knee in. So remember, we had a little vinyasa going with the other side. Inhale, arms will straighten as the knee pushes into the hands. Exhale, bring that knee in. Be very conscious of matching the length of the breath with the length of the movement. The right leg has stayed active, that foot is flexed, thigh is pushing down, knee is happy, it's soft. So we'll do one more, right? And of course, the amount of movement we're doing is different for each of us or how many repetitions is different because it depends on the length of the breath. But once you finish that exhale, hold the leg in place. And then right hand to the right hip, just as a reminder to stay down. 
Left hand is gonna guide that left knee to help it open out to the side and do a hip opener. That's your inhale. Exhale, bring the leg back up. It might take you a couple to find your rhythm, match the movement with the breath. Next time you get to that exhale, we'll just hold the knee in place above us, right? Leg is still bent. And then we're stretching that leg up to the ceiling. Both feet are flexed. Spread the toes wide on both feet. Breathe into the stretch. And then just like on the other side, an option to hold the leg right here, which might be enough, or to create a vinyasa, bringing that leg a little closer and letting it back off. One more. And then when that leg is back to its starting position, perpendicular to the ceiling, let go of the leg or the strap, big inhale. Exhale that leg all the way down. When that leg does touch down, relax and breathe. All right, we're gonna let the legs maintain that dead weight kind of feeling, let them relax. Let's take the arms, reach them up towards the ceiling. Lift the shoulders off the ground and then plug the shoulders back in. From here, I want you to bend at the elbow so the hands are coming back towards your head. We're taking the arms into Garundasana, eagle. So right arm is going underneath the left. The further you can cross these over, the easier it would be to wrap the arms around and maybe for the palms to find each other or backs of the hands together. An option or variation is always to let the hands grab onto the shoulders. So once you're in whatever variation of that is good for you, lift the shoulders again away from the earth, rounding them out. Focus on the breath. So the elbows and the shoulders should be in the same plane. What do I mean by that? 
Um, if I drew a line from my shoulders to my elbows, that line should be perpendicular to the floor and the ceiling. So the elbows are not down on top of my chest. Keep breathing. The forearms perhaps parallel to the ground. Slow and controlled breath, active arms, soft legs. All right, give me an inhale. Exhale, release the arms, drop them down alongside you. And then inhale, arms straight up to the ceilings, lift the shoulders away. Exhale, plug the shoulders back in. Bend at the arms. This time, left arm is going underneath for Garandasana. Round the shoulders, create space between the shoulder blades. Set your alignment, close your eyes, breathe. One more breath in and get to that exhale, release the arms, let them come down to the earth. And then draw that left knee back in because I realize I left you unbalanced and stranded somewhere. Go ahead and take that supine twist to the right. Keep that left shoulder down. Gently return to your back and hug both knees into the heart. All right, rock this out a little bit. So come back to stillness, whatever's underneath your head, go ahead and move it out. Hands in front of the knees or the shins. So we're gonna start rocking from crown chakra to root to come back up to a sitting position, but I don't want you just to do it on the first try. I want you to rock a few times. And you know what, if you get stuck and you can't make it back up, however you get there is fine with me. Maybe one more time. All right, let's come to a seated position, sitting up tall, closing the eyes. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale the hands to the heart. I'm gonna drop my right forearm to the inner right thigh or knee. Um, if that's too far to go, just add a block there. Okay. Easily solved. Lengthen the spine as if someone were pulling the top of your head. Right? Inhale that left arm up and then take that arm over. So we're lengthening out this side bend. You should feel it in the left side. Pull back that top shoulder, push into that right leg. Maybe take your gaze upwards. Deep in the breath. So ideally, don't really want to see my arm blocking my view. That means I haven't opened up that shoulder, but what if the shoulder doesn't open up? What if it's tight and that's as far as it goes? Maybe come up a little bit off of that right leg to see if you can find that rotation.
Slowly make your way back up. Exhale the left arm down. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, Anjali Mudra at the heart. Drop that left forearm to the left leg. Find the length first, then inhale that right arm up and take the side bend. So do what you need to do to set the alignment. And then inhale, come back up. Exhale, the right arm down. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale, Anjali Mudra. Release the arms. We're going to straighten both legs out in front of us. Grab your bolster, or pillow, whatever you have. Let's go ahead and I'm gonna put that over my thighs horizontally. I wanna sit up really tall so I can pull that in against my stomach and my low ribs. And then slowly, I'm gonna see about hinging forward. And this is where this is gonna end up looking different for all of us. So you could grab some other props here so that the head is something, to rest on. You could add your blanket as well. Um, if you don't have any other props, you could get your elbows against that bolster and kind of use your hands to hold up the head, wherever that might be, right? So prefer you not to have the head hanging in space just because I want you to be able to relax here. There's nothing wrong with that, I, but it's restorative. I want you to let go. So if you can't figure out a way to get the head propped, just make sure it's comfortable. I don't want a lot of tension on the neck muscles. And then close your eyes, find your happy place. And we'll kick off that yoga thing. So we've quoted Rumi a lot, right? He's a 13th century Sufi poet. And the Sufis have a lot of great stories that are, well, I think in first reading, perhaps they seem really odd. They seem kind of goofy, whimsical. Uh, some might seem obvious, but there's supposed to be a meaning there, almost like a Japanese koan. The Japanese koan is like a riddle that you can't figure out. Some of the Sufi stories seem that way, but I want you to dive into them and look a little deeper. So the one that I wanted to share with you was about this clever smuggler who would come to the border of his country every day with a donkey. And the donkey had one of those saddlebags on his back and the saddlebags were filled to the brim with straw. And so the border official stopped him and said, what do you have in those, in those bags? Um, and the man said, he didn't have anything, he just had straw. But the border official didn't believe him, he was very suspicious. And so he took all the straw out of those bags, kind of threw it around and was puzzled to find that there was nothing else in there. So he had to let the man cross. Every day for 10 years, the same man would cross this border with a donkey, with saddlebags filled with straw. And every day for 10 years, this poor border official was driven nuts because he believed the guy was smuggling something, but he couldn't figure out what it was. Many, many years later, after that border official had retired, he happens to run into that man and he says, wait, I have to ask you this question. I know you were smuggling something. I'm no longer affiliated with the government. I beg you to tell me what it was. And so 
the man said, well, donkeys. So what I like about that story is the answer was right in front of the guy's eyes, but he couldn't see it. He was looking all around for a solution when the solution was standing right in front of him. And so that got me thinking a lot about how we have trouble seeing our own answers. It's so much easier to offer advice to somebody, to give our opinions to somebody, or to see maybe what somebody else isn't seeing. A lot harder to do that for ourselves. And so while I have you in this restorative pose, I want you to take your focus to the heart space and tap into that voice that emanates from there. It's there, I'm telling you, but often it's very, very faint. And what if we were to try to detach from whatever it is we're trying to work out, detach from the emotions, to find a way to focus in on that voice that has the answer. I'll let you sit with that for a moment. Take a deep breath in, hold it. Let it go. And then we'll slowly make our way back up. Take your time getting there. And then take your bolster or your pillow, whatever you're using around behind you horizontally across the mat. I want you to pause here to push the backs of the thighs down, flex the feet, draw the shoulders up, take them back and down, lengthen. So feel the hips pushing down against the earth, crown of the head rising. And just pause here for a moment. So. My intention is for us to lay back into a supported back bend. Think about if that's okay for you. If your back is not into any type of back bend, turn the bolster in the other direction so you're fully supported. You might even prop up the back end of that bolster. Um, you could take a block or a pillow or something, throw it out there behind you, just in case your head doesn't want to be all the way on the ground or doesn't make it there. So keep that length that you've got in the spine and then use your hands on the bolster to guide you back. Take it slowly, lift that heart. And then relax the legs if you're still holding the flex and the ankles, wiggle that out. Back to your deep breathing. So I'm wondering when I got to the last part of that story, how many of you were thinking, well, that was a stupid story. That's what I mean. That is, the, that is exactly what the Sufi stories sound like. You read them and you think, well, that was ridiculous. They're meant to be ridiculous but then go back and, and see what you're missing. That's a pretty good message about the answers being right in front of us, don't you think? So perhaps while you're exploring this restorative pose, noticing of course that no coincidence that I have you opening up the heart chakra here, what answers are you seeking right now?
Take your focus to your back. Never should you be thinking, I just got to get through this, right? So if your back has reached its limit with this back bend and you don't have anything underneath your head, you might try adding something to add some compassion to the pose, or you might come out of the pose early. Truly, if you are struggling in a pose, this is the perfect Sufi story for you. The answer is right in front of you. The answer is move, change it up, right? You don't have to wait for me to change the pose. Deep inhale, hold it. Exhale. So I wanna come slowly out of this pose. Bring your elbows to the bolster. Start to lift the head. Now, if you are thinking I can't get back up, roll over to a side, okay? Very slowly. You could even get the hands to the ground behind that bolster and push whatever is best for you. But this whole idea about wanting to move out of a pose but not doing it, mm -mm. I want you to feel empowered that you can make any changes on the mat that you want to because it's your practice. All right, once you get back up, we wanna re-round that spine. So child's pose, using the props, however you would like to, so that we can find that curvature in the spine, let it soften. I think I'm gonna come all the way down. Once you get comfortable, I want you to take your focus to the back, and that's where I want you to breathe from. Especially if you can feel that back bend anywhere, that's the exact spot that I want you to imagine you're inhaling from and exhaling from. So as you just soften into the space, I want you to think about which pose did you prefer? Do you prefer that supported back bend or do you prefer child's pose? No right or wrong answer, just come up with an answer in your head. You might even be thinking, well, it depends. Some days I really need to stretch that out and I like the supported back bend. Other days I need to come within, and so it's balasana, child's pose. Or maybe you're thinking, well, I liked the supported back bend initially, but I'm so relieved now to be moving in the other direction. Let's just say if you had to choose right now, what would it be? All right, give me a deep inhale. Let it go. So is it possible that your answer is based on perspective? Is it possible your answer is based on circumstances? I'm coming back to this. Stay where you are. And then I'm going to make an assumption here. I'm going to assume that at least one of you is using a prop in this pose. Actually, I'm assuming more than one of you, but let's go with one person. I want us to push away all the props. All right, coming down in Malasana without the props and then walk the hands to the left 
so that you're in twisted child's pose. When you get to an exhale, let's walk the hands back through center all the way to the other side. And then coming back to center. And then walking the hands in towards you. Let's pull the knees in so we can come on up into table. Set your alignment. When you're ready, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Come back to table, tuck the toes, downward facing dog. Stay with the deep breathing. On your next exhale, knees back to the earth. Untuck the toes. Inhale, cow. As I exhale, I'm gonna walk my hands forward and take this to puppy. So make sure that the hips stay above the knees. The hips did not come forward with you. And they also didn't push back toward the heels, right? Forehead to the earth or to a prop. Arms are staying active, fingers are spread wide. And then can you, can you roll the upper arms, this is energetically, out and away from each other. So out and down. I want you to create space between the shoulder blades. Probably an easier way of saying that, right? All right, go ahead and lift the head. I'm gonna drop my elbows and just slide forward into sphinx. Gently, carefully, thoughtfully. The elbows should be right underneath the shoulders, lift the heart. Inhale. Exhale, release the chest down, slide the hands back, push up into table. Okay, inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale, table, tuck the toes. Exhale, Adho Mukha Svanasana, downward facing dog. Create space between the shoulder blades, just like you did in puppy. Three deep breaths. When you get to your next exhale, bring the knees down. Untuck the toes, inhale, cow. Exhale, puppy.
When you're ready, lift the head, release the elbows, gently lower into sphinx. On your next exhale, release the heart, slide the hands back, pull the shoulder blades in, pull the elbows back, and little baby cobra, Rujangasana. All right, give me another inhale. Exhale, release, push yourself up into table, grab your bolster, Pillow, blanket, right underneath you, horizontally across the mat, and then release the hips on top. Ah, come on down. Closing your eyes, letting go. All right, so we kind of left off with a question about perspective. And so I have another Sufi story for you. It's called The Sun and the Cave. So one day, sorry, I think I have dog hair on me. <laughs> one day, shocker, the sun and the cave were having a discussion. And the sun was having trouble understanding what the cave meant with the words dark and dank. And the cave was not understanding the sun when the sun talked about light, clear. And so they decided to change places. So the cave went up to the sun and said, wow, I get it now. This is wonderful. I can see everything. Now come down and see where I've been living. And, the, and so the sun went down into the cave and said, huh. I don't see any difference here. So we bring our perspective with us. That also reminds me of one of my favorite Zen stories, which is, of course, the one where um, this man is coming home from being away for a very long time and comes to this river and can't seem to find any way to cross it and the water's too fast paced and he looks you know up and down the river bank doesn't see a bridge but he sees this old man on the other side right and he yells across to him and says hey how do i get to the other side of the river and the old man looks up and says my son you are on the other side so again we have these great stories about perspective and maybe there's more to it maybe it's about being okay with where we are. That does not mean you have to settle for where you are, but it certainly gives you then this idea of what steps do I put in place to achieve my goals. If you have your head turned to one side in this pose, I want you to go ahead and turn it to the other. So back to the sun and the cave story, I kind of got off on my on a tangent there with the other one, but what I like about that story is it's a reminder that we bring our mindset with us. And so if I wake up and I don't know, something occurs or goes wrong in the morning that I'm not expecting, I might carry that through my entire day saying, well, this has been a really crappy day right? But I don't know, has it? Has the whole day been that bad? What in the day was good, right? A shower was nice and hot. Maybe that's the thing I cling to, right? Oh uh, yeah, that felt good. Or I liked the smell of my new shampoo or whatever it is. There are small things along the way that we need to acknowledge. So we take our mindset with us. Are you feeling like the cave this morning? Are you intending to carry that with you out into your day? Or do we replace that with, ah, I see what the sun is saying. And 
take that with us. I at least hope you're finding these Sufi stories amusing. There's so many of them and you can easily find them on the internet. So if you like them, dive in and figure out what the meaning is to you. All right, give me a deep breath where you're at. We'll let it go. If you have your head turned one way or the other, let's get the neck in alignment. So forehead on top of the hands for a moment. We're gonna lift the head, let's plant the hands. Shoulder blades in, elbows tucked in, lengthen through the spine, slowly finding a supported cobra wherever that will end up for you. Deep breath in. Let it go. And then let's meander back to table. Wiggle this out a little bit. I am going to turn my bolster lengthwise underneath me and I'm gonna add a block somewhere on top. Where exactly? I don't know. But we'll find out where it needs to be. If you think you might need two blocks, and I know you don't know because you don't know where we're headed yet, throw it up there on the bolster as well. All right, let's go ahead and tuck the toes. Inhale, cat. Exhale, cat. Come back to a neutral spine. Take this to downward facing dog. So as you set your pose, I'm hoping that you can move the block such that you can rest your forehead on the prop. So you could turn your block, right? It doesn't have to stay at that low height. Whatever makes you happy. I don't want you to have to change your stance, like walk the hands way out to try to bring the forehead to the bolster. I don't want you to lose the alignment of the pose. I just want you to add the props into it so that the head can rest. Space between the shoulder blades, fingers spread wide. If the heels touch the mat, maybe you can lift the toes a little bit and then set them back down. Deep in the breath. And then inhale. Exhale, slowly bring the knees down as you slowly pick the head off of those props. Pick, a, pick your head up off of your props. I just don't want you to go too quickly, especially if you felt like all the blood rushed to your head. Breathe here. Get up into my bolster. Let's sit back again. Any type of seated pose. Inhale the arms up. Exhale to the heart. Take the left hand, reach it out behind you. So off at an angle, like 45 degrees off behind you. Set the fingers on the earth. Inhale that right arm up. So I wanna lengthen here. And then I'm gonna use the leverage of my left hand to pull the heart center towards the left. So a little turn, reach up through that right arm, and then maybe you can reach back a little bit, breathe. Slowly come back to center. Both arms return to rest on your knees. Inhale, both arms up. Exhale to the heart. Take that right hand out behind you. 
Inhale the left arm up, lengthen, pull back that right shoulder, turn the heart towards the right knee a little bit, and then lift and lean back into that left hand a bit. I do mean left hand, left hand reaching back. I guess you're not really leaning into it. I didn't want to be confusing. Breathe. And then slowly return. This time, both hands, palms down on top of the knees. And then round this out, drop the chin and hold it right here. Soften the shoulders, lengthen through the back of the neck. When you get to an inhale, you can find your way back to center. Gently roll out the neck and the head. Ready, inhale both arms up. Exhale to the heart. All right, let's set up your space for Shavasana. However, that looks in your mind's eye. Recreate it. Ah, get comfortable. Deep inhale, big exhale, and let go. You'll know when it's time to come back out of Shavasana when you hear my voice.